Hey, what's going on, guys? I hope everyone is having a, a wonderful day today. Um, I know I'm going this live, but I want to just, you know, keep it short tonight uh, for the sake of, you know, stuff I got to do. Or if my wife needs something, so, but I told a couple of people I was going to go to live tonight. So hopefully some people join and whatnot. But like I said, I'm planning on keeping this short. I just want to kind of give you guys an update and also some exhortation, okay, in Christ, which is very important. And also share um, this dream I had that, that really um, resonated with me a lot, you know, when talking about Christ and what he has done for us, you know. Um, but before we begin, I got to give you the gospel because that is the foundation of every message that I try to put out here. You know, just in case someone don't have time to watch the, uh, a lot of the messages, at least you can get the gospel. And if you haven't believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, this will be your opportunity to believe, you know, the gospel. It's that simple, okay? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Jesus Christ died for our sins according to scriptures, was buried and rose again on the third day for our justification. Hello, sis. The whole purpose of this is um, that God will come to save humanity from their unwretchedness and to reconcile us back to himself, okay, through his son, Jesus Christ. It's that simple. We know that Christ died for our sins, according to scriptures, was buried. Third day, he rose again, our justification, and now sits at the right hand of the Father, okay, making intercessions for us every day. Hello, sis. What's happening? Yes, you made it. Believe the gospel today, the dead burial resurrection of Jesus Christ, and trust in his finished work that his shed blood was sufficient to pay for all sins, past, present, and future, okay, for each one of us. He already paid it all, okay? Our sins judged on the cross. The moment you believe, it is applied to you, okay? And if you remain an unbeliever, you then have to, huh, guess what? Pay for those sins, and that is an eternity because it can never be paid for. It's an eternal consequence to that, okay? Um, in a place eventually called Lake of Fire, you know, at the Great White Throne Judgment, which is the final judgment. So just because a person die right now and go to hell, it doesn't end there. That's the first death. The second death is the Lake of Fire, you know? And this is so important because people are not really visualizing, you know, what God has done and the importance of believing in salvation i'm going to share a couple of things with you guys today and then we and then we, we, we kind of go from here okay sherry planet mommy melissa don susan what's happening i hope you guys are doing well all right so let's talk i had this dream okay uh last night yeah last night about i was a prisoner right I knew I was a prisoner. There, there was a, a gate. I can I mean, I could see the gate, like the the bars, but I also know that I can walk around freely, but within the boundaries of that prison cell, if that makes any sense. In, everything looks normal to the eye, but there's a gate where you can go past here. And there is the person who have you, who have you as their prisoner, right? But then there's another man that I knew also. I don't know how I knew that, but I just knew this man was a wealthy man. And he has a son. And this wealthy man made a decision that he's going to pay whatever it takes for me to be freed from that prison. Okay? And then the son is the one that comes to make that payment. This is crazy. The son is one that can make the payment so that I can have true freedom, okay? And then the person who had me in bondage at first as a, as a, as a prisoner also was a person of stature, but they didn't have a choice in accepting that payment, if that makes any sense. Like the payment was being made for me and they have to accept it. So it wasn't like a choice for them to say no. How do I know that? Because they were not happy that I was 
free. The gate opened after the payment was made, right? But here's the kicker. The son who came to represent the father, who okay, who sent him to pay for my freedom, told me flat out, this is true freedom. You have freedom now. You could go as wherever you want because you have freedom now. You are now, this is what freedom looks like. You actually have true freedom where you could go wherever you want. I started thinking to myself, I'm like, wow. So many people are in bondage and don't even know they're in bondage. Because they have the law. The law. This is why it's so important that you come to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ by faith alone. Okay? I had faith that this man is going to set me free, but I don't know him per se. Like the, the rich man. I knew this wealthy man is going to set me free somehow. And the son seems to know me. And I had a connection with the son, but it's so weird. Like I can't really talk about his face, you know, because I really can't. It was just so odd, but it's like I knew he got my, I knew my freedom is coming because he will set me free. Like, I just knew that. I mean, if that make any sense, you know, I just knew. And then when the time came, he actually came and did exactly that. But the person who had me bound, or should I say in that imaginary, you know, cell, was not happy that I was free. But there's nothing he can do about it. How can I tell? Because his demeanor changed. The fact that I was free and there's nothing he can do about it, he wasn't happy. But it didn't matter because the son was happy that I was free. And I was happy that I was free. And the fact that he's telling me I can go wherever I want, there's no boundaries here. Okay, you have true freedom now. That was that's what resonated with me. And when I woke up today, as as as, as, as I was in a shower, you know, I, I was I was thinking Ephesians two eight nine, for by grace are you saved through faith, and are not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's a gift of God. God offered this gift. This gift is Christ Himself, Jesus Christ. He is the grace. He is a gift that is offered to us. Anyone who believes in him receives eternal life. And you are now free. Jesus said, <laughs> Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And the Son set us free. And if the Son sets you free, you are truly free indeed. Free from works, righteousness, which is self-righteousness. Free from law-keeping, okay? which is against fate, by the way, okay? Free from all this churchianity restriction that is placed on people saying you have to be water baptized or else. You have to speak in tongues or else. You have to go to church every Sunday or else. You have to confess your sins or else. On that topic of confessing sins, There is, like, for me, I don't see anything wrong with a person that acknowledge that they've done something wrong. Like, when you have that in your conscience, like, oh, but you're not acknowledging, oh, Lord, please forgive me, because you're already forgiven. When you come before God, he told you to approach the throne boldly. You cannot come before the, you know, the throne boldly if you feel that God is mad at you about something. If God is mad at you about something, then or show your fruits or else. Exactly. Thank you, Don. You know, all the fruit inspectors. All these boundaries placed within these is something that is bondage, but people don't even know that, you know? Because they think, well, guess what? We must do this or else. And everything has to do with punishment. Because if you don't follow those rules, there's a punishment. God is going to kill you. He's going to take you out of this earth soon. I mean, all kind of stuff. Or better yet, if you don't do any of this, that proves you wasn't saved or you're going straight to hell if you die. I mean, all kind of stuff. Or if you think, you know, you could just say that you believe the God, so in trust in Jesus alone, faith alone. Oh, yeah. No, because according to James, you know, faith alone cannot save. You know, there must be works accompanied by faith or else faith alone cannot save. So good luck with that. You're going to wake up here. All these restrictions, which is so stupid, 
but his dream was so clear what freedom looks like. And God is showing me, this is what your freedom that was purchased is supposed to do. Make you free. When God said, whom he sets free is free indeed, he was not lying. Why are men complicating things to make it more difficult than what God has said? If God needed a side, you know, motivator, he would have sent you. But he doesn't send you because you don't know what you're talking about. And I think a lot of this problem, we, we see the whole situation now. Let me uh, say something very clear. Scripture is infallible, okay? Every scripture is infallible in the Word of God. Our Bible is infallible. means there's no errors, okay? Let's get that clear. However, there are understandings that do not align sometimes, and those understandings will be revealed later if you continue to read. That's why it's called progressive revelation. You know, we see this a lot in the Bible, okay? For example, when God called out Moses, right? Did you know that Moses, for 40 years, when he ran, he spent 40 years out, right? Moses, it took 40 years out in the wilderness, okay, before he can even begin. Moses was married. <laughs> if you read the Old Testament, you see all this stuff. But it took time. It took time. Even when God brought Moses to Pharaoh, right, to free the children of Israel, Moses didn't just say, oh, well, this is what God is going to do. God showed them. Why did he take God to do it? The whole 10 plagues. Why 10 plagues? Why not just one? One should be enough, right? But God continues to show them because for over 400 years, they didn't hear from God. So God trying to show the people, this is who I am. And he keeps showing them, this is what I can do. This is how powerful I am. And he keeps revealing himself in increments. And if you notice, it gets worse and worse and worse to show how powerful he is and what he's able to do, right? What is the final one? The Red Sea. Okay, guys. If Do yourself a favor and go Google how deep is the Red Sea. How deep is the Red Sea? When you find this, what up, Ray? Chris, Christian, what's happening? Google the Red Sea. When you find how deep the Red Sea is, now imagine God said that when he parted the Red Sea, the children of Israel walked on dry ground. It's not puddles. He said dry ground means it's dry ground. That's what he said. Okay? I want you guys to grasp this. Yet, why is God showing this to them? When they look back and saw Pharaoh's army behind them, why did they panic? They panicked. But God placed a barrier between them and Pharaoh to let them know, I'm God. He continued to reveal stuff to them over and over and over. And he didn't stop there. When they were in the wilderness, God continues to show them who he is. Think about a child, okay? When you, all you who are parents, you will understand this. When your child is born and you look that child in the eye, what up, Vivian? When you look that child in your eyes, you don't, you don't have expectations for that child right away and say, you know what? I expect you to do this, this, this. Kid have no freaking idea what you're talking about. You slowly train that child, right? You slowly show love to that child in increments. So that you can't pour everything at once on a child. He won't understand what the heck or she. They won't know what to do with whatever he's saying. And as they progress in age, you continue to teach them. This is part of progressive parenting. You don't parent everything instantly at once. And here's the kicker. Some of those kids... You could do such a well job as a parent. They love you as a parent, but sometimes they won't even listen to your instructions, even though they know 
those instructions that you give is good for them, but because they have a mind of their own, sometimes they feel like they want to do what they want to do, but you don't love them less because they're your children. But what do you do? You're still trying to correct them and say, hey, look, now you've made this error. Now you see what I was trying to protect you from? Now you have to deal with these consequences, but I'm here to protect, I'm here to guide you through it. I'm not going to sit here and let you burn, no. I'm going to guide you through it. If we, who are evil by nature, can do those things to our own children, how about God, who is good and gracious without sin, loving, okay, patience. We don't have the patience of God. Hold on one second. Jade. Jade. Hey, bring it down, son. Because when God, who is that patient, can love us this much, and yet people act as if, you know, he's this warden that walks around want to beat you upside the head every time you cough. Why did you cough? Bam. What up, Anna? You know, this is not right. And many people are walking and seeing God this way. This is why many of them say they hate Christianity because to them, the Christian God is a God of torture and, and threats, you know? There is no freedom in the Christ that many are preaching. And that's the problem, okay? We see what goes on in YouTube. People that like to accuse brethren, okay? Clearly, when it comes to David Benjamin, a lot of people don't even understand, you know, his ministry. And that's the sad part because at first, when I first, you know, got on YouTube, you know, one thing I did pray and ask God is to put people in my circle that actually help me grow as a believer. People who are like-minded, who actually are genuine. I don't want to do it. And then to remo remove all the fake people. And he did exactly that, you know, because the crazy thing is when I start getting dreams about, you know, serpents, whatever, whenever I'm dealing with certain people, the moment they're gone, those dreams are gone with them too. I'm like, mm, go figure, you know? You have a serpent in your midst. And then when that person is gone, the serpent dream, you know, goes away. It's crazy. But I'm but, but I'm, I'm going to tell you guys something. God's love so, supersedes any gossip that man can throw at us, okay? People talk bad about the Benjamin Greg Jackson, many more that's, you know, preaching and trying to help people grow in the knowledge of the truth. Oh, they say that the Bible is an error. The Bible is just a, first of all, no one is saying that you get, it's that people are not even understanding what it's saying, you know. You know, all of us have a time where we believe one thing that the Bible says until we are being revealed something different as you mature. Remember, that's going with maturity in your faith. You're not going to believe the same thing from the time you believe the gospel until the time, you know, 50, 60 years later. No, not if you're trying to grow. If you're maturing, there's 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 the milk, and then you slowly will mature to the meat. When's the last time all you moms and pops out there brought up a steak and gave you a child that has no teeth and say, eat, chew them steak? When has that ever happened? You need strong teeth to chew meat, don't you? Well, it takes time for those teeth to grow. When they have them two little teeth in the front, they can chew anything anyway. Okay? That's what I'm saying. Like, it's so crazy. People are acting, and some people still remain in the milk because they refuse to grow. And it's so sad because so many people sit and just mad and mad and mad and mad because to them, they want a God that will pretty much destroy everyone that they don't like. When you cross the line of saying that this person who's been preaching the gospel, and by the way, David Benjamin's ministry is not about just the gospel, but it's about the Christian life. Actually, how to live as a Christian. Pauline, that's what it's about. If you really don't understand, so now let me tell you what it is, because it took me before I didn't know what it was, but then as I started paying attention, I realized, wait a minute, he's actually teaching on Pauline, you know, which is Paul's ministry to the Gentiles, you know. Now, if you have done your research for all the people who like to come against brethren, 
you will realize James, when it was written, there is not a single one of them that understood what justification meant as for the Christian life. All they knew is that we believe in Jesus Christ, we are saved. No one taught them how to live as a Christian by faith. So what, what did they have before Christ? The law. So in their mind, well, since we are the children of God now by faith in Jesus Christ, we must do A, B, C, D, E, D. They, they went back right back to the law. This is how you keep, you know, yourself, you know, as a Christian. This is how we know, because if you're doing these things. It is not a biblical error that a book is there. Because no book is error. It's infallible. However, what God does is he shows you the progression. What good is it for me to have a history where it's just what only what I like. No, you got to tell people the whole story. That's the point. You have to tell the whole story. That's what God does. He tells the full story. So he shows you how things began, how it was going, and how it will end. That's just how it is, you know? So when you see the, the church in Acts chapter 2, how it began, right? In the upper room. 3,000 were saved. Well, how did they know about living a Christian life? Not a single one of them knew that. All they knew is they believed the gospel, they're saved now. They're going to heaven, and that's just that. And that's and and they're saved. They are brethren. They're saved. You know? However, when Paul came to start teaching about justification, which, again, Jesus is the one that taught him that because man didn't teach him that, but God himself. Why did you think that God chose Paul? May I remind you that Paul had dual citizenship, means he is a Jew and also a Gentile. Because when he brings the message, he will bring the message to both the Jews and the Gentiles, not just the Gentiles, but the Jews also. None of the apostles was persecuted and martyred because they preached what people agreed upon. No, they were murdered because what they preached People hated what they preached. It goes against human nature and human understanding because you're trying to reason what God has done with the human mind and trying to say, well, just like people can tell you today, nothing is for free. Well, maybe to you, but when God says something is free, it's free. Psalm 24 1. Is this 24? Psalm 24 1. The earth is the Lord and everything in it. So what he says, that's what goes. Doesn't matter. Your opinion really doesn't matter. It is his word that he created. He says how it goes, and that's just what it is. He decides how a person gets saved. That's just what it is. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. Your worst enemy can murder all your family. And as much as you hate him, he comes to believe the gospel before he dies. You can say, no, God, he deserves to go to hell because even though he believed the gospel, you need to reject his salvation and he needs to go to hell, burn in hell. No, no, he won't. He'll go straight to heaven. You're not going to like it, but again, this is the grace of God and the God doesn't want any to perish. And people don't grasp this, you know. When you can understand this, you can be angry. You're free to be upset, but it's not going to change the outcome of God's judgment on the world and God's gift on the world. God does not give gifts based on how we feel today. You know, I feel that this person doesn't deserve this, you know what I mean? So there's no reason why they should be saved and go to heaven. That is not up to you. You might not like it, that's your opinion, but God says everyone deserves the chance to go to heaven. Doesn't matter what you've done. And I think many people have forgotten that Paul was there when Stephen was stoned to death. He was with the council at the time in Jerusalem. He was there. People have forgotten that. Why do you, on his way to Damascus, he wasn't there to go freaking find, you know, a steak to eat or a, a nice restaurant. He was there to persecute Christians. He volunteered. He said, look, send me. I'm going to go find them. People were terrified of Paul. They were, Saul at the time, people were terrified of him because he viciously persecuted Christians. They were scared of that man, okay? 
And God said, I'm going to use him. Paul didn't have a say in it. It wasn't premeditated with Paul where he says, you know what? I'm going to do something and then God's going to do this. No, no. He thought he was doing God's work. Teacher of the law. He was a Pharisee. Read Galatians chapter 1, okay? And Paul tells you, his, he, he gives you a rundown of himself, you know? But I want you guys to understand something. God showed that to Paul. And Paul told you that no man taught him the gospel, but God himself taught him that. So how is it that he has a more clear picture than the rest? Because God brought Paul to be that barrier between the Jews and the Gentiles, hence why he have dual citizenship. <clears throat> Peter didn't have dual citizenship. Paul did. Okay? This is why Paul can preach to the Romans, preach to the <clears throat> Gentiles, they will listen to him. He also preached to the Jews. And he was correcting them. He corrected them concerning the Christian life. He didn't correct them on the gospel because they believed the gospel. He knew they were brethren. He knew they were saved. He corrected them on the Christian walk, how you live. And this is why he was accused of, again, they always claim, you, you blasphemous, you know, you, you're teaching people not to obey God's law. Listen, that's where the problem began. When he wrote Galatians chapter 3, he wasn't writing to unbelievers. He was writing to believers who were being deceived by those Judaizers who don't crept in, trying to get them to keep walking by the law. That's why he would ask him this question, you know, in Galatians 3, where he says, how did you receive did you receive this faith by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Why we be, you got to think about the context and the questions that's been asked by Paul to these people to understand, okay, there has to be something else going on here. Okay? So I'm here to tell you guys, all these people who like to bash and, and, and unfollow them. I, honestly, that's what I do. I just block people, hide them from a child, and keep pushing because I don't have time to argue with people. Either you're going to believe that or you don't. Now, Disciple are saved brethren clearly because they believe the gospel. But to have that kind of offense to the point where you start condemning another brethren and saying that they're not saved because of this or they're a wolf or this or they're, I mean, that's just like, that's excessive, man. We got to do better than that, you know? People just throw words out there, you know? Do you know what the wolves in sheep clothing were? These are not saved people, just so you know that. Okay? Stop referring to people as wolves if you don't even know what that means. And if you deny another brethren salvation, which they have received by faith in Jesus Christ, then according to John, he was saying that you are a Cain. You have won, you have gone to the way of Cain. Because they stand on the grace of God by faith. You hate the fact that they stand on the, you know, on the grace of God by faith. So you hate them for that. It is absolutely mind-boggling that people have no discernment. It's, it's like the discernment keeps decreasing and decreasing. It should be increasing, not going down. It should be going up. This is why some of y'all need to stay off of YouTube. If you notice, I stay off of YouTube for a while. Because you know what? I'm, 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 I'm going to do other stuff so I don't have to get upset, you know? Because YouTube is not just live. Some people... They love the drama. On, I love my drama on TV where I could watch it on TV. You know what I'm saying? Fictional drama. You know what I'm saying? And leave it there. Not to bring that into your brethren's though. Come on, people. I mean, people have to do better in this, you know? Greg Justin stays there each day sharing, encouraging brethren through the gospel and trying to let people know to stand on faith. I mean, and yet people can sit here and say, oh, he's a wolf. He's a wolf. Some of these people are so freaking dumb, it's not even funny because they just use words that don't even understand the meaning of it, you know? Accusing brethren. Who are you that accuse another man's servant? Huh? That's the question. This is why I, I stay out of all of this nonsense, you know? And, I, and that's what I told you guys before. When it comes to this, <clears throat> I'm blocking folks and keeping like deuces, man. Like, I don't got time for that. I'm not going to argue with you. Either you believe what God is saying or you don't. 
I'm not here to force you into believing, you know? Amen, Anna. Hey, I'm with you with that, you know? Like, it's crazy. We're supposed to fellowship together. It's okay. As families, you're going to have some people that you're not going to agree with, and that's okay. But you don't hate them, though. You don't administer hatred. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't go into the people and say, oh, look, blah, 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 blah. We don't do that, you know? It's wrong. You know, it's wrong. Do you know what's so exciting? When you can see a stranger and you talk to them and you find out that they they believe the gospel, you're not there asking, how's your Christian walk? How do, no, you're just excited. There's a, there's a joy and excitement that goes through your heart. If you've never felt that, try that. I kid you not. It is the link between Christ, each one of us. There's a joy that you find out that this person you're trying to talk to actually believes the gospel. There's an excitement that goes right straight through you because you know that they're your brethren in Christ. You guys are related by blood of Jesus Christ. And that feels so good inside. You're not asking them, how's your walk, though? How's your, how's your walk, though? How am I going to, you know, you know, you know, you know, what kind of works have you done to prove that? No one asking that nonsense. And yes, in case you guys also don't understand this, James, like many can sit here, you ever wonder why false teachers literally sit? That should be the red flag you should always look at. If the first thing people go to is James in an argument, that's your red flag right from the jump. They support the teachings of James. Let me un help you understand something. None of them understood justification as life, as a Christian. They didn't understand Christ as life at the time. They didn't know that. Paul taught that. Read Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 5 is very clear. You see Paul literally disputes all of that. But as you continue to read Pauline letters, you see like everything he was teaching was about Christ as life, Christ as your reward, Christ as a sanctification, Christ, I mean, everything is Christ, Christ, Christ. Why would Paul say, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain? Like, his life is about Christ. That's what it should be for each one of us. That's why he have all this exhortation, you know, and admonitions in, in Scripture for believers, you know, not to walk in a certain manner anymore because he wants you to understand this is no longer who you are. This is your new identity. Walk in this new identity now, you know. Oh, you guys want a license to sin? Everyone had a license to sin. Yeah, well, a lot of them, a lot of them, unfortunately, you know, you know, you know, they are brethren in Christ, you know, don't get me wrong. Oh, no, yeah, they are, they all say brethren, you know what I mean? And some of the teachings are really, like, really good, you know, so I'm not going to knock them on that. But, but when it comes to certain things, some people are just immature in certain areas, and they really shouldn't speak on something that they don't know about, you know? And one of the Achilles heels that I found out is the whole sin confession or else. If you don't confess sin, then God is mad at you or this and that. Let me, again, go read Hebrews where he said to boldly approach him. I, I think if the if the writer of Hebrew, who knows more than we do, clearly, if that was the case, he would have wrote, before approaching the throne of grace boldly, you must first confess your sins to make peace with God. And then approach. He would have wrote that into that book. Don't you think? No, as believers, we have freedom. You don't understand that freedom. When many are still in bondage in their head, in their head, many are still in bondage. And they are striving. I'm going to do this because, you know, God is going to reward me. This is the, let me tell you something. The only reward you're going to get is what Christ has done in and through you. And yes, there are rewards. Yes. But it will be something that God has done in and through you at the Bema seed. Everything else will be burnt up and it will be counted as lost. But you're not really losing anything because you never had it. That's the point. You could have gained something, but you didn't because you was doing something based on your own, own preconceived notion that God is going to reward you for it. For example, how many of you, every time your kids brush their teeth, after you tell them to brush their teeth, every time they brush their teeth, you give them money. Good job for brushing your teeth. Here go five dollars. Oh, you took a shower today. Here go five dollars. Why would you? Even Jesus said, "How can you give something to someone?" You know, doing what's right. What? 
why would he reward you for something that you know to do is right and 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 you're doing that's just ridiculous you know yeah <laughs> what is <laughs> what up ron chairman what up bro yeah pastor and i said oh yeah do you teach that you bring your sins to me so they say yes the next <laughs> see that's what i'm saying you know a lot of people don't understand you know this freedom we have in Christ and the grace that God has given us, they really minimize the grace of God. And that's a problem, you know, because it shows they think they have this high value uh, outlook on God, but actually are showing how less they think of God because they're using the human mind and not understanding that God is above all things. Okay. Your mind like me and my wife was having this discussion the other day and I'm like, this is crazy. We start thinking about when we read it in Genesis, we're like, like the creation, and you start processing that, but like, there's some things that doesn't make any sense to me. I'm like, this is crazy. You, you're just not going to figure God out. You just won't. God is a mystery, okay? He's a mystery, but he revealed himself through his son to us. That's love. And we will have a lifetime to learn of him, because what we learn is just a, a little bit right now. We don't know everything, so when all these people are walking around thinking, we have figured this out, this is the... No one knows squat. All you know is but a little. We all know just a little. No one can brag about that. I know this much God is this, 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 that. You only know a fragment. God is so like above and beyond what the human mind can conceive. This is why some people have a hard time believing that there is someone that created this world. Why? Because they have to stand outside and look and see how everything is flowing, the stars, the moon, the sun. I mean, this just it's just crazy. When you sit back and start processing these things, be like, your mind will freaking go there. Like, this is nuts, man. Like, what? Man, it shows you <clears throat> how big God is. Many, minimize God's big heart and look at it as a human father that is not the same that is not the same even jesus said when he was speaking to the people right when he said things like this when he was talking about how many of you when they when there's when the child asked for you know uh meat will give him like uh i mean i'm sorry the actual fish will give him like a snake or something like that right you know and I don't mean diverse per se, but if you know, you know. He was making the analogy. He said, even you who are evil, he called us evil, know how to give good gifts to your own kids. How much more? The father. You know? How much more? The father who is good. You know? It's so important that we really, really be careful who we listen to and entertain, okay? There's a reason why I don't subscribe to a lot of people's channel, even though they're still brethren, okay? They are believers, but because I don't agree with certain things when it comes to the doctrinal issues I have with them, and they're not willing to resolve that, I just leave them alone and say, okay, hey, I'll just see you in, in, in the clouds, and not just that. That's how I feel about it. But you don't go around and saying, this person here, is not saved because this person is a wolf and this one is a wolf. Really, guys? Really? Are you that freaking immature that you're just calling everyone a wolf, don't even understand what a wolf means? Why don't you go find out where it was used in the Bible and who it was used against? Then you understand the stupidity behind that, you know? When you see people who sit here preaching the word of God, trying to encourage saints, trying to encourage your brethren so they could go out there, you know what I'm saying, continue to live a life in freedom of Christ and love Christ. Because when you understand that you have this much freedom, there's much love and appreciation for the one who gave you that kind of freedom. You have a restricted type of love when someone has all these crazy boundaries, can't do this, can't do this, or else I'm going to smack you. Like, yeah, I'm sorry, that's not love. If you guys have been into an abusive relationship, you understand. If you grew up being abused, you will understand exactly what I'm what I'm talking about because I lived that life, so I know what I'm talking about. That's not love, you know? 
it masks itself as love, but it's not love. True love is freedom. Tell that to the slaves, okay? Who were in bondage for so many years. That's not love. When they got freedom, that was liberating for them. I can go here now. I can, I can, I can go wherever I want. That is freedom. Many of you are still in bondage in your head. You need to come to the end of yourselves and realize that you are nothing without Christ. You can do nothing without him. Stop making your prejudgments, preconceived notion thinking, I can do this, I can do that outside of Christ. No, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me means only God is one that can give you the strength to do it. Without him, Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Doesn't that even make any sense to you? You can't jump around that and say, oh, that's not true. That's not true. I can do whatever I want. I can go out there and save all the people. I can do here and do this. If you can do all that apart from Christ, without Christ leading you, you are doing what you call <laughs> self-righteous works. And it is wood, hay, and stubble. I'm sorry. While it might be intentionally good for the outcome of that person, but you're not getting anything. It's going to be burnt up. Wood, hay, and stubble. Sorry. Only what God has done in and through us is what stands. That's it. You either get on board with God or you just stand on the corner, you know, keep doing the same thing you're doing. Choice is yours. No one's forcing you, you know. There's there, but you know what? Division is important. There has to be division because during the time of the apostles, there were divisions. Okay? But it is necessary to weed out those who wants to bring, you know, more chaos and will teach you to bound you back to the law. You have to be, there has to be a division. God is doing that, clearly. So these people who teach all this stuff, everyone was like, oh, praising. All of a sudden, you start seeing what they actually are believing as people are beginning to mature. Again, progressive revelation. As you begin to realize certain things, Things are beginning to make more sense now that you begin to mature as a believer. Then you'll be like, nah, this is not right. Because as Christians, this shouldn't be this and this shouldn't be that. But some people are still stuck in that mindset because they have their own favorite pastor that tells them that. Oh, the seminary pastor said this, so therefore that's what it is. That seminary pastor is not God. I'm sorry. Read your Bible and the Bible will tell you exactly what God has said about you and believe that. Man can be faulty. Remember that. I can be faulty. All of us can. And there's going to be a time where we say certain things where someone corrects us, then it's our job to go back and look and say, oh, man, you know, yeah, you're right. This is wrong. I need to fix this. And you go fix it. That's because you want to grow. You don't see we can say, hey, you know, I said it. You know what? I'm not changing that because you know what? Everyone agrees with it. So no, Every, just because everyone agrees with something doesn't make it right. Okay. In Jerusalem, everyone agreed with James. James was leading the freaking pack. He wasn't a pastor. He was the bishop of Jerusalem. Like, research James, guys, okay? Because it seems like that's Achilles heels for a lot of people. The Calvinists, or all these fake people that come around, faith without works is dead, faith without works is dead. I'm sorry. If James was talking about faith, you know, justification before man, why then would he say faith alone cannot save you? That it must accompany works. And yet Paul says that we are saved, we are justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law or apart from works. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith and then not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If faith alone cannot save you, it's no longer a gift. Do you understand that? If works has to be included from you, your works, then it's not a gift. That's an exchange at this point. A gift is received freely. An exchange. That means you're going to be indebted to God forever because you can. we can never pay the debt we owe God. This is why we need Christ for that, okay? The one who is righteous because it requires someone who is righteous to pay the sin debt for the unrighteous. An unrighteous person cannot pay for his unrighteousness. That doesn't make any sense. Now we got. 
You might do that when you go to jail and, you know what I'm saying, here in man's land where you could commit a crime and do your time and that's it. But if you notice, a lot of time when you do your time and come out, what happens? When you're trying to apply for a job, did you commit... Have you ever been to jail? Have you ever they put out this seven application? Why did they put that there? So that the stuff that you did, even though you paid for it, it still haunts you, it still affects you. But this doesn't happen with God. God doesn't count any of this against you any longer. Why? Because when Jesus Christ died on that cross, he paid for the sins. Sin was judged on the cross, past, present, future, all of it, all at once. So therefore, when you have believed the gospel, all your sins, past, present, and future, is judged all at once. Okay, cl close my door. Thank you. <laughs> my wife think I'm yelling. I don't know, because I'm just excited. But it's all paid for on that cross, you know? Why can't you just receive it happily and just be thankful and just enjoy that freedom that you have in Christ? Why is it so hard that you don't want to see someone else enjoy their freedom in Christ? You call them lazy because they say, I'm going to face with Christ and enjoy him. And you're busy mad because you say, I'm over here doing all this work. And you're over here just sitting there talking about, I'm going to feast in Christ and just eat it. Well, good for you. If you're that bitter, you know, then maybe that's a self problem. Remember the prodigal son? The one who went out and squandered all his father's, you know, his inheritance, by the way, okay? Squandered it. His father, when he came back, his father walked on him with open arms, threw a face for him. The one who claimed to be faithful was helping out in the, in the field, working with them and doing all this stuff. He was mad that his brother gets to get a feast thrown for him, but not me that has been faithful to you all this time, you know? And yet his father said, you never ask for one, you know. You could have feasts anytime you want, but you never ask for it. Because you're so busy focused on someone else. Focus on your walk with Christ. How about that, you know? For all you people who like to bash fellow brethren, focus on your ignorant behind and just get back and go focus on your work, you know. Focus on that, on your own work, right? You want to count on people's works, oh, yeah, yeah. How many works they have and this and that. Really? Go sit your butt down somewhere. Like, seriously, this is getting so irritating. Because I'm like, you guys have to know better than this. At this point, where we are, things is getting worse, guys, if you're not paying attention, you know? People need to wake up and say, enough is enough. Like, seriously, you know? God is the one driving the ship, not you, not me, not anyone. He's the one. Okay? Keep that in mind. Let's not try to walk over things. We can step on God's toes because, you know, I could do it better than he. I know better than he does. No. You don't know what God is doing in anyone's life. You don't know that. You can't call people lazy just because you're over here just talking crap. You don't know their life. That's the thing that's so funny about it. Many of these people know zero about someone's life, what they're going through in their own personal life. You don't know them individually. So you can't speak on things you don't know. But you make the generalized statement because you, you're over in front of a camera, want to act like you're holier than thou, but behind closed doors, you have your own hidden sins that you do. Let's be real. I don't want to walk around talking about, well, I you know, I just, you know, ever since I got saved, I don't see them, I don't have any thought, I don't have the... You're a freaking liar. Everyone sins. Every single person does, Okay. Well, you know, you know, you know, I don't do intention. It doesn't matter. Intention or not, it's still sin. Everyone does. So let's stop doing this, okay? Making others feel like, you know, I'm better than them because, you know, what this isn't. No, you trust God. God is the one working in each one. And what it looks like on one person is going to be different from the other one. Our job is to continue to encourage people to look to Christ, to walk in a manner who, that they received him by faith and to keep trusting even though your life might be hectic, even though the situation that you deal with might not seem like it's plausible, keep trusting God in the midst of it, okay? That's the point. You don't just throw in the towel and say, you know what, screw this, blah, blah, blah. No. You always look to Christ. He is the answer all the time. All the time, you know? 
Never forget that, guys. Oh, by the way, want to give you guys a, a quick update also. My surgery went well. I go back on Monday to, what up, Thomas? No, I'm a banana. Hector. What did Hector say? Hector. Let me go back to the chat. I'm a new Christian. I've been searching for God, but I'm a problem with addiction. I've been cleaning up a couple months. I don't know if you guys. Okay. Oh, I understand, man. You know, everything takes time. Everything takes time. Just trust God. I had um um a head surgery here that was done last Friday. Yeah, last Friday. So on my birthday, right? What it did to celebrate my birthday. So I have seven staples that's holding it. So I have to go, I have to go back on Monday for a post op so they can see if it's ready to remove the staples. So it can, you know, um properly heal. I think it might be a contribution, maybe, you know, but no, uh, like I said, I feel fine though, you know, like like I'm doing good. So I mean. Given that the scar tissue, like like the scar area, is still painful if I touch it, you know what I mean. But it doesn't bother me if I don't, you know, touch it. So I just have to keep clean the area and keep applying um, the stuff they gave me for it, you know. So, but yeah, other than that, I'm doing well, you know. They removed the um, is a cyst. I have a cyst that was growing on, on my head. It was getting bigger, which is crazy, you know. Yeah, so they they removed it. You know what I mean? So, but I was happy about that. Hector, welcome, by the way, okay? And I just want to say something, Hector. Just encourage you, you know? Listen, God loves you, bro, you know? I know. God loves you, and I want you to understand something, you know? We all start somewhere, you know? It doesn't matter what we've done in this life and what we struggle with. My encouragement to you, Hector, is to keep trusting Jesus. The same way you place your faith in him to save you eternally, okay? Place your faith in him with the addiction and with the struggle that you face in this life as well, okay? Trust him. It's not that sometimes we we mess up and we fall right back. It doesn't change our position in him. It doesn't change our status. Once you're saved, you are saved eternally. He's not taking that back, okay? But I, I, can, I, can, I can honestly tell you this, you know? None of us who are saved ever once have not sinned after we got saved or have messed up or haven't done anything. We all do that. I mean, it's just, we still have this flesh. The battle is always going to be there. But I'm here to tell you, trust Jesus Christ, even with your problem. Go to him with and say, I'm struggling with this. You know my struggle already. I'm going to trust you to help me through this. I don't know how long it will take me, but I'm going to keep trusting you. My thing is never stop trusting Jesus Christ in the midst of everything you face. You're going to go through some hard times. You know, addiction is, is really a tough thing, you know what I mean? But there's nothing greater than God, okay? There's nothing greater than God. Some might kick it so fast, and some it will take longer. But you don't stop trusting God, or you don't beat yourself up when you mess up. Just go and say, Lord, thank you, because I know that you are going to deliver me also from this. From the desires of this, I know you're going to help me through it also. He is that powerful. And, and, and that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. You can't limit yourself to just salvation to go to heaven. Your Christian life is also Jesus Christ himself, you know? God have made his abode in each one of us. We are a walking temple, literally, okay? So if you're a walking temple, you have the access to go to him boldly because he is in you already. I don't know how people come up with this whole concept of, you know, well, let's do business with God because, you know, confess sins because, you know, you know, because if you don't confess sins, then then, then God is, is not going to hear what we have to say. Are you crazy, people? Like, what? He's already in you. Well, God's going to shut the door and wait, you know, fold his hand and say, I'm not talking to you until, until you go and confess. Confess what's already been forgiven? Like, what? You didn't think he knew? You didn't think Jesus knew you're going to sin again after you be believed? Really, guys, read the book of Corinthians. Even Paul was admonishing the Corinthian church. We're like, you guys was doing worse than the Gentiles who don't even know God. 
Like, I'm like, dang, what the heck were they doing? Someone was sleeping with temple prostitutes, one of them that was clearly sleeping with his stepmom. I mean, this is crazy. Some even still dealing with idols and stuff. You know, I mean, there was a lot of stuff that was happening. And they get, I mean, stuff happens. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. But it doesn't change your position in Christ. Continue to walk in the same manner you received him, which is by faith. And keep trusting Jesus Christ. Let your eye be single on him. Means Christ alone. Stop looking at yourself. When you look at yourself, you're going to see yourself. You don't want to see that. You want to look at Christ to see you. That way you could see you in him. Okay, that's how you want to see yourself the way God sees you in Christ. Okay? So, anyway. With that being said, 55 minutes. <laughs> time for me to dip. But I'm going to leave you guys with this, man. Thank you, first of all, for everyone that joined this. But please, those people who like to bring in um, division and accuse other brethren that you know that are saved or being unsaved because you don't agree with them, just mark and avoid them. They're still brethren. Just mark and avoid them because clearly some people are operating in offense. And that's just, and no, no one got time for that. What is is in no state? Well, hey, I got to go because you know what time it is over here? It's like 9 or 08. So, bro, man, got to eat something, okay? I need some food. <laughs> <laughs> that was no, you can, oh, wow. Family. Amen to that. One day I want to get people close to Christ because of love. Amen, Hector. Amen, Hector. You know, he <laughs> said, markets and avoid it. <laughs> Bro, you are funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is it 11 or 8? Oh, wow. So you like, wait, like the East Coast then? Chema, yeah, I know. That's the Muslim stuff. Oh, wow. North Carolina. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh no 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 no. Yeah, North Carolina. Okay, yeah, that's East Coast. So, of course, is it Midwest? It's like two hours. I don't remember. Yeah, Hector. I definitely will encourage you to watch Greg Jackson. He's very good and encouraging as new believer. I also will encourage you to watch David Benjamin if you want to grow as a Christian. The Christian life. That's what he teaches. You know. Um, on the Christian life, Christ's life. That's so important because that helped me so much. That's why I don't understand. If you if, if people don't understand what he teaches, just say that. Instead of going around making these stupid videos, it's, just so, it's so childish. It really is, you know? It really is. I just be marketing and avoiding people these days, man. I don't give it on. I just don't care. I'm marking and avoiding. Like, like, no one has time to argue with people anymore. And I'm saying, like, believe what you want. Bro, sis, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, as long as you believe the gospel, I care about that. That's my main thing. Now, when you want to dispute over a Christian life and that, that's on you, man. But I know what the Bible says, and we're going to stand on that truth. We stand on business, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> when it comes to what the Bible says, we're going to stand on that, you know? So at this point, I'm like, man, I don't care. People are going to get mad. Hey, they're going to they're gonna get over it, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're going to get over it. But it's not supposed to stop you from moving forward. You know what I mean? Like, keep trusting Christ regardless, you know? I pray that one day they will come around and realize, you know what? Maybe we were wrong. We were wrong at some point, each one of us, you know? I mean, until you understood more and more. I'm like, okay, you know what? This makes sense now. You know what? To say that Greg Jackson thought about, oh, I, I saw this thing when someone talks about, oh, Greg Jackson say he used to believe in this. He used to go against this. He, Man, what? Who cares, man? Sometimes we believe one thing one day, and then when we get a better revelation in the future, we say, oh, you know what? I used to teach this, but now I'm based on this new revelation and I'm beginning to understand more and more and more. You know, yeah, I was definitely not correct over here. And so I can tell you how many times I've, I've been corrected. And one thing about me is when I'm wrong, and someone helped me see that, I will really, really appreciate it because I actually want to learn, you know? This is not about having pride, you know what I'm saying? I don't care who corrects you. And some people say, a woman can correct me. Go sit down somewhere, you know? <laughs> what? Anyone that's in Christ that knows, you know, something that you don't know, you should be able to accept that correction and just, and just, and just 
Humble yourself and stop walking around pridefully, you know? Just because you have a title means no no one can correct you because you have a title. Or you have a certain accolades, you know, behind you like that. That don't mean nothing, you know? To us, we are all the same in God's eyes, literally. He looks at, he doesn't say you are greater than him or you greater than that person. No, that's not what he says, you know? So whatever. <laughs> anyway. See, see, that's what I'm saying, you know, like I'm telling you, COVID, as terrible as it was during that shutdown, man, God freed so many people from the bondage that held them down with institutional church. I can't even tell you when the church buildings were shut down, where no one can go to there and people were so desperate and they got online, man, so many people got freed from the churchianity and they never went back. And a lot of pastors don't like that. So now, they think about that tithing money don't went down, you know. God is going to curse you. You stole from God, you Malachi unbelievers. <laughs> Mark chapter 3. Would you rob God? And yet you rob me in tithes and offering. I can't stand these people, man. <laughs> Jesus, help us. <laughs> I don't listen to them. I don't know who that person is. I don't even listen to him. I only, <laughs> I, I, I only listen to people that I know. You know, my thing is this: you want to, anyone who points you to keep looking at yourself, stay away from that person. You want someone to point you to Christ, to look at Christ as life. Heck, no, definitely not Billy Graham. Okay, all these people that teach repenting of sins to be saved. Look at their gospel. If your gospel is not faith alone in Christ alone, stay away from that person. If they say you must do something outside of faith alone to believe the gospel, they are teaching a false doctrine. That's the that's the easiest you know gospel test to mark and avoid people. You know, easy. The ones that are crazy is the one that that, that yeah. I mean, it, it's really hard trying to find churches that doesn't backload works or like or they tell you well yeah you say it but. How you live your life will determine if your faith actually is real or not. That is not true, guys. You know, if you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, that is enough. Okay. You have believed in him, you know what he's done for you, accept that free gift. You just thank God and live a life of freedom in Christ and thank him for it. Keep trusting God. I wish I can go into an explanation, but all I can tell you is. <laughs> Listen to Greg Jackson. We are not scaring you. We're just telling you the truth because there's just unfortunately the reality. Many people get saved like I was. And, and, you know, when I first heard the gospel, well, not really here, but I believe in Jesus Christ in the church. And everything I heard outside of that was how to. The question I was about works, works. It was works, 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 back to the law keeping. I mean, it was crazy. And from there, I went from there to Lordship Salvation to Calvinism. I was I was listening to all these people and I was in so much bondage, like to the point of depression and suicidal because it, it was too much. Like, I felt like no matter what you do, you're going to fail, that God is never happy. It was just insane. You know, it really was. But when I finally understood the grace of God, the freedom came in and I was like, whoo, man, the light bulb came on. I will tell you, Hector, as a new believer in Christ, just go start watching Greg Jackson. Greg Jackson used to be into Calvinism, and he exposes them big time, okay? So he knows a whole lot more than I can tell you. But subscribe to Greg Jackson for that, and uh, just to, really, and then Eva also, Eva Saved by Grace, you know, you'll see me on my community post stuff I share there. Um, some people I share on my community post. Really, Eva is like on point to Petra. I mean, a lot of them, they, they really, you know, um, <laughs> be still and know, you know, I just love my fellow brethren, man. I really just stand on business, man. You stand on truth, not wavering, you know, not wavering. That is something I can say, guys, you know, just stay around people who doesn't constantly shift, you know, one moment they believe the gospel and then the, the next moment, I don't know. I don't know. I'm staying away from you completely because I don't want to do people like that, you know, because, because to me, that's too frustrating, you know, to, 
You know what I mean? Like, stay still, man. Stop mo moving so much. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's crazy. But anyway, I want to tell you guys, just continue to trust Jesus Christ. Continue to look to Jesus Christ. No matter what happens, keep looking to him. Oh, man. Another brother has shared something with, with me. Oh, man. I was going to bring that up. Maybe I could, you know, I could share you guys. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, actually. Um, man, you know, I'm going to do a separate video on that one. I'm not going to do live on that one. I'm going to do a separate video on that one. I'm going to just upload that one because he shared it with me. I'm like, oh, man, that was really, it, it, it gave me this whole thought about, talk about the rapture, you know. It literally is clear that it's pre-tribulational. Like, in that verse, when I read, I'm like, boom. I never, like, processed that before that way. But then when I say, I'm like, wait a minute. And he said this. Mm, I said, here go another one. It's really good. But I'm going to do a video separate from that one, okay, from this, anyway. And then just kind of talk about that and discuss it. Because I think it's important to understand the climate that we're living in. This is good. The church is going to end in apostasy. Well, not the church, but... What we call the church today, the institutional church, is gonna is gonna be completely in apostasy, and we see it already. You know what I'm saying? We see it already. So, but with that being said, guys, you know, keep looking to Jesus Christ no matter what, um, and just keep trusting Him. You know, with your life issues you face in this life, struggles you face in this life, go to Him about it, and trust Him. We all have issues, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. I got some serious issues going on too. But it's not as bad, you know. It's just little minor mishaps that will happen here and there. I'm like, come on. Like, I just, I don't want to be stressing out about certain things, you know what I mean? But it happens, and that's just part of life, you know what I mean? But I have to go to God about it. I'm like, Lord, oh, just help me with this because I'm really, like, not trying to stress out over this. But, you know, it is what it is, you know. It is what it is. But I just have to keep trusting him through it all. We all have that, you know. That's the beauty of having Christ. You can always go to him anytime you want. You know, you don't have to, you know, play this little game of, you know, I need to come in a certain way holy. If you're upset, you're upset. Let's not fake it, people. When it comes to God, God wants your authentic self, okay? Your authentic self. When you're upset about something and you want to bring it to God, let him know, yes, I am upset about this. There's nothing wrong with that. You can't try to pretend Hoo -hoo -ha -ha in front of God because he knows what's in your heart already before you even open your mouth. So why trying to pretend? Don't play that game, people. Stop listening to people who always come to pretend as if they don't have no issues. Everything is always pitches and cream with them. Everything, oh, how one everything is always wonderful. No, that's not the reality of life we live in. Sometimes you're gonna face some trouble situation, you're gonna face some harsh, harsh times, and that happens. But you don't stop there and say, you know what, I throw in the towel. We don't throw in the towel. We go to God, you know. Kiana, good night. And thank you for logging in. Appreciate you, sis. Much love, much love. But I'm going to pray before we leave anyway. Oh, yeah, Hill song is just terrible. Anyway, enough about other people because I need to eat some food. Tidings of the law, my, my my friend Hector. Tidings of anyone who's who's teaching tidings of the law. You can give if you want to give to support a church, a ministry. That's up to you. But tithing, is so you got to tithe ten percent. That is something that was given to the Jewish people in the Old Testament. Okay, and that is of the law. That is under the Mosaic law. Just so you know that. Okay, so don't believe that, guys. Okay, stay away from people who are trying to place you back under the bondage of the law. We are no longer under the law, but under grace in Christ, Jesus Christ. You have Jesus Christ now. Christ is the end of the law for those who believe. Okay? Remember that. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this life today. I pray that everyone who came on this life, that they were spiritually encouraged, nourished for the God. And I pray that you please, whatever we're facing in this life, Lord, I pray that you please continue to remind us to place Christ first and foremost in all things, don't matter how hard it is for us sometimes to fathom and sometimes how hard it is for us to focus on Christ, remind us, continually remind us that we can always come to Christ with our problem 
and not stay in depression or stressing ourselves over something we cannot control or change. I pray that you please continue to guide us, Lord, especially in these times that we're living in. Things are getting crazier and more weird as the day go by, as you can tell. But I'm praying that you please continue to lift us up as one body in Christ Jesus Christ and continue to help us to encourage one another, to lift each other up, and to continue to pray and, and just, you know, encourage and cheer each other up to keep running and keep looking to Christ. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys, and I appreciate every single one of you. You like my pineapple? <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't know. You know, when my locks were so little, I couldn't do that. So now, as it gets, you know, longer, you could do, like, you know, little stuff like. See, he's moving. <laughs> All right, guys. Y'all have a good night. Love and appreciate each one of you. Sis, Melissa, much love, sis. We'll chat later, okay? More memes coming your way. <laughs> later, guys. Peace. <laughs>